In this video, I'll show you how I made a spot welder for less than $15. As you can see, it works amazingly well. For this project, you'll need a transformer from an old microwave. First, set the resistance on your multimeter to 200 ohms. The primary coil should measure around 3 to 4 ohms in resistance. This means I can use this transformer for the project. Next, I carefully cut and remove the secondary winding without damaging the primary winding. It's crucial to avoid damaging the primary coil as that would render the transformer useless. Once the secondary coil was removed, I added my own secondary winding. I used a 10 square millimeter wire, and I bought 4 meters of it just in case I needed more. I bent the wire in the middle at 2 meters and started rewinding it. I made three double windings, which appear to be six, but effectively are three turns. I then cut the bent wire in the middle and trimmed the other two wires to the same length. I removed the insulation from the ends of the wires and added lug connectors to all four wire endings. I pressed the connectors onto the wires using a pair of pliers. To support all the electronics, I used a small plywood sheet and drilled holes in it to attach the supports. The four supports didn't make the plywood rigid enough, so I added two more for a total of six supports. Now, I have attached the transformer to the plywood sheet. You can cut the wires to any length you prefer. Since these two wires are the same color, I added a heat shrink tube to one of them for better aesthetics. I then added connectors to these wires and covered them with heat shrink tubing. I tied wires of the same terminus together using zip ties to keep them strong and secure. Next, I attached the wires using screws and fixed them to the plywood so they wouldn't dangle around. Unfortunately, I lost the footage of me drilling holes through the copper strip, but I'll show you the finished setup shortly. I cut two copper rods, 
each five millimeters thick and eight centimeters long. I sharpened the ends of these copper rods so they can be used for spotlighting. Here's the copper strip that I drilled holes into. I apologize for losing the footage of this step, but you can see the final result. And then I fixed the copper rods to the copper strip. I cut off the extra screws that were protruding from the copper strip. Next, I took a PVC sheet and made markings so the nuts and screws could fit in. I joined the wires to the copper strip using screws and nuts, then removed any excess material. I glued the copper strip to the PVC sheet using super glue. The PVC sheet acts as a good insulator between the two copper strips. I brought the copper rods to their final dimensions and added heat shrink tubing to prevent any shorts that could be dangerous. This gives me a better looking spot welder than most commercial ones I've seen online. I added a larger heat shrink tube to cover the larger connections and also smaller tubes for the wires that carry the trigger mechanical switch to the board. I am using a timing board for this setup. This is the power input and it's important to correctly connect the positive and negative terminals of the power input. The power input supplies power to the timing module, which I'll show you now. Here it is. The timing module is labeled HCWM421. It has four connecting slots at one end and three at the other. To wire it correctly, the positive of the input goes to the first slot and the negative to the second slot. The positive of the trigger switch connects to the positive of the input and the negative connects to the third terminal from the positive. the second and fourth slots must be connected to each other for it to work. This is the final wiring setup. Please ensure you wire it correctly or you will spend a lot of time troubleshooting. Let me show you in detail. Connect the positive of the power source, 6 volts to 30 volts, to the first slot and the negative to the GND or ground slot. The positive of the trigger switch goes to the same 6 volts to 30 volts slot and the negative to the slot marked trigger. Next, I attach the timing module to the plywood using double-sided tape. I added heat shrink tubing to the copper strips to avoid getting shocked while using the welder. I made sure to add two layers of heat shrink tubing for extra safety.
I cut out the tubing where the trigger switch is located. I positioned the trigger switch for comfortable use. Finally, connect the power supply to the power input. It should be between 6 volts and 30 volts. I am using a 12 volt power supply. Now, I'll show you how to program the timing module, which is crucial for controlling how long the current stays on for a good spot weld. Press and hold the second switch for two seconds until you see P1.1 displayed. Set it to P1.1 and press the second switch once to confirm. Then, hold the second switch to navigate to the OP function where you can set the timing. I recommend setting it to 0.2 seconds. After setting the timing, press and hold the second switch for two seconds to confirm the settings. Now let's test it out. As you can see, it works really well. Finally, connect the welder to the AC terminal. I bought a 7-8 fuse for safety, which you can get from automotive stores. Attach this fuse to the middle terminal of the three slots on the timing module and then to one side of the transformer's primary coil. The AC input wire goes to the other terminal. Make sure everything is secure and use zip ties to keep the wiring neat. Now I am testing the welder without touching it directly to ensure it doesn't shock me. It's working great. I did it. It didn't cost much to make. Links to the items I used in this video are in the description. Let me know if there are any adjustments or additions you'd like to make. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more DIY projects. Feel free to leave any questions or comments below. See you next time.